Hi, welcome back to my channel. As you requested, I invited Grandma Sautome to help us in our today's lesson. In our previous lessons, we had an introduction regarding the literary elements in our lesson number 13. We discussed elements of a plot in lesson number 14, major elements of a narrative in our lesson number 15, different kinds of story characters in our lesson number 16, and different types of literary conflict in our lesson number 17. If you fail to watch our videos about it, I put its link in the description box below. Please complete watching our videos up to its end. I always add some activities and seat works at the end part of my videos to help you master the lesson that we are discussing. I also add at the end of the video all the shoutouts as my appreciation for your comments in my videos. I will mention and congratulate those who were able to finish the video and get a passing score in our seat works. Just comment the score that you'll get in the comment box down below. If you also want me to shout out your name in my next video, just leave a comment down below. Before we proceed to our lesson for today, please like this video as your support to my channel. You can also share this video to your friends, share the happiness, and most importantly, subscribe if you are not subscribed yet to my channel and hit the notification bell for you to be always updated to new lessons that I will upload here in my channel. For starters, I present to you the vocabulary words that you will encounter in our discussion. Try to match the words to their correct definition in the left column. I'll give you a moment to think about your answers. Time's up! Here are the correct answers. What you saw are different examples of mood. The mood of a piece of writing is its general atmosphere or emotional complexion. In short, the array of feelings the work evokes in the reader. Every aspect of a piece of writing can influence its mood from the setting and the imagery to the author's words, choice, and tone. Every aspect of writing has a mood whether it's a masterwork of literature or a short haiku. Generally speaking, any word that can be used to describe emotion can be used to describe the mood of a story, poem, or other piece of writing. Here are some words that are commonly used to describe mood. 1. Mysterious 2. Light-hearted means amusing and entertaining 3. Whimsical means playfully, quaint, or fanciful, especially in an appealing and amusing way 4. Humorous 5. Reflective 6. Angry, 7. Fearful, 8. Hopeful, 9. Ominous means giving the impression that something bad or unpleasant is going to happen. 10. Gloomy means dark or poorly lit, especially as to appear depressing or frightening. 11. Idyllic means extremely happy, peaceful, wonderful, perfect. 12. Cheerful, 13. Melancholy means a feeling of pensive sadness, typically with no obvious cause. 14. Calm, 15. Tense, and number 16. Lonely mood. Now, what makes up a mood? These are the basic elements that help determine the mood of a piece of writing. First one is the setting. A story setting is where and when it takes place. Setting is one of the first things to be described in a narrative and therefore plays a major role in establishing the mood. Next is imagery. Imagery is similar to setting in the sense that it helps to establish mood using descriptions of physical things in the world of the story. Not every image in a work will be indicative of the story's mood, but images that are repeated or described in detail usually do reflect the mood. Next, tone. Tone or the attitude of piece of writing is closely related to mood. 
Often, the tone and mood of a piece are similar or the same. Another major element that determines the mood is the diction. Diction are the words that a writer chooses to use, play a huge part in determining the mood of a piece, in part because different words that mean the same thing can have different connotations. A writer might choose to use more antique diction like thou art instead of you are if they want to create a whimsical mood. And last, genre and plot. This one may seem obvious, but the genre and plot of a work contribute to its mood in many different ways. For instance, a murder mystery with many complicated developments and twists probably has a suspenseful or tense mood. For you to easily understand the mood in a story, listen very carefully and observe the elements within the story of Ranma One Half. On a training journey in the Bayankala mountain range in the Qinghai province of China, Ranma Sautome and his father Genma fall into the cursed springs at Jusenkyo. When someone falls into a cursed spring, they take the physical form of whatever drowned there hundreds or thousands of years ago whenever they come into contact with cold water. The curse will revert when exposed to hot water until their next cold water exposure. Genma fell into the spring of a drowned panda while Ranma fell into the spring of a drowned girl. Shun Tendo is a fellow practitioner of Musubetsu Kakuturyu or Anything Go School of Martial Arts and owner of a dojo. Genma and Shun agreed years ago that their children would marry and carry on the Tendo dojo. Shun has three teenage daughters, the polite and easygoing Kasumi, the greedy and indifferent Nabiki, and the short-tempered martial arts practicing Akane. Akane, who is Rana's age, is appointed for bridal duty by her sisters with the reasoning that they are the older sisters and can dump the duty on her, and that they all dislike the arranged engagement and think a kind of dislike of men is the right way to express it to the fathers. At the appointed time, they are surprised when a panda comes in and puts a girl in front of their father. The Tendo girls all laugh. It takes several more pages for the situation to be explained to Shun Tendo and his daughters. Both Ranma and Akane refused the engagement initially, having not been consulted on the decision. But the fathers are insistent and they are generally treated as betrothed and end up helping or saving each other on some occasions. They are frequently found in each other's company and constantly arguing in their trademark awkward love-hate manner that is a franchise. Focus. Ranma goes to school with Akane at Furinkan High School where he meets his recurring opponent Tatewaki Kuno, the considered Kendo team captain who aggressively pursues Akane, but also falls in love with Ranma's female form without ever discovering his curse. Nerima serves as a backdrop for more martial arts mayhem with the introduction of Ranma's regular rivals, such as the eternally lost Ryoga Hibiki who traveled halfway across Japan getting from the front of his house to the back where Ranma spent three days waiting for him. Ryoga, seeking revenge on Ranma, followed him to Jushenko where he ultimately fell into the spring of the drowned piglet. Now, when splashed with cold water, he takes the form of a little black pig. Not knowing this, Akane takes the piglet as a pet and names it Pichan. But Ranma knows and hates him for keeping the secret and taking advantage of the situation. Another rival is the nearsighted Moose, who also fell into a cursed spring and becomes a duck when he gets wet. And finally, there is Genma and Shun's impish grandmaster, Haposai who spends his time stealing underwear of schoolgirls. Ranma's prospective paramours include the martial arts rhythmic gymnastics champion Kudachi Kuno and his second fiancé and childhood friend Ukyo Kunji, the Okonomiyaki vendor, along with the Chinese Amazon Shampoo, supported by her great-grandmother Cologne. As the series progresses, the school becomes more eccentric with the return of that demented Hawaii-obsessed principal Kuno and the placement of the power leeching alternating child adult Hinako Nino Miya as Ranma's English teacher. Ranma's indecision to choose his true love causes chaos in his romantic and school life. Now, let's jump and talk about the book for story of Ranma One Half. Naturally, Ryoga isn't pleased. He jumps in human form trying to take Ranma out of the duel and pair up with Akane in the meantime. Ranma in female form and Ryoga wind up together 
turned the duel into a free-for-all mess while fighting each other. Though, Ranma and Ryoga both discover that Akane can swim, she falls into the pool beneath the ice, and together jump in to save her, except Ryoga turns into a pig. Oh well, as they recover later, a strange Chinese girl jumps in and tries to kill female Ranma. This is Shampoo. She's out to kill female Ranma because of a local village edict that if a stranger of the same sex defeats you, you must kill her. So Shampoo has hunted Ranma down all the way from China. Moving on to book 5, Ranma's weakness is revealed to be cats. Due to screwed up training administered by his father, Ranma can't stand cats. If exposed to cats for too long, he mentally turns into one and becomes invisible. Shampoo comes back with her great grandmother, who makes Ranma unable to tolerate hot water. Now in book 6, after much training, Ranma finally defeats Shampoo's great grandmother by basically turning into his invisible cat mode. Akane in turn tames the cat mode Ranma and so wins the antidote to Ranma's inability to tolerate hot water. Thus, Ranma can return to male form. Fast forward to book 13 to 14, the mentor of Shun Tendo and Genma Sautome is a small ugly obnoxious women's underwear loving dirty old man named Haposai. Unfortunately, no one can beat him. One day, he gets so angry at Ranma that he causes Ranma to become weak, so weak that even a child could beat him up. All of Ranma's enemies come to hunt him down, only Ryoga protects him, and that's because Ryoga hates seeing weaklings get picked on. Book 25 to 26 of Ranma 1 half is about Akane's journey. Akane traveled to the monster inhabited woods where she was once saved by a strange little boy. She discovered the strange little boy is now a young man named Shinosuke whose job is to fight monsters in the area. The monsters are actually normal animals who have grown huge thanks to the magical whales in the area. Let's jump to book 36. Genma is out to steal a family heirloom from his wife, a gold medal worth maybe $20. Ranma is out to stop him. Of course, the wrong temperature of water always seems to pop up and Ranma's mother becomes progressively suspicious. In one great scene, she tries to make female Ranma convert to male by plopping an empty tea kettle on his forehead. At last, however, Ranma meets his mother in his male form and they shed tears of joy until Ranma's father inadvertently sends them all into cold water. However, Ranma's mother is convinced of Ranma's manliness and so he's saved. Finally, in the last book of Ranma one half, back in Japan, a wedding is arranged for Akane and Ranma with the reward of a battle full of Nanichuan water. Unfortunately, all of their friends arrive and the result is a mess. And so we go into overtime with Ranma and Akane, and the story continues for them. But alas for us, this is where the series ends. Now, let's analyze all the scenes in the story we read about Ranma 1 half. The first scene is our example for a mysterious mood. The mood in the scene was considered to be mysterious because of the curse that Ranma and Genma got after they fell in the cursed springs. The scene of Ranma and Akane's family's first encounter was considered to be lighthearted because of the way how Ranma was introduced to the Tendo family. It was quite amusing and entertaining. Next, the part of the story where Ranma and Akane went to school is a whimsical mood because of Tate Waki Kuno's involvement in the scene. He fell in love to Ranma who is really a man and was cursed to turn into a woman whenever exposed to cold water. Our third scene was considered humorous because of Ryoga, him becoming Pi Chen, the pet pig of Akane. Humorous in the sense that despite being his rival, Ranma cannot do something about it. The fourth scene was considered to have a reflective mood because of Ranma's indecision to choose his true love between his paramours, Kodachi Kuno, Ukyo Kunji, Shampoo, and of course Akane. The scene we got from Ranma 1 Haps Book 4 has an angry mood because of the fight scenes we had between Ranma, Ryoga, and Shampoo. In the part of the story where we found out that Ranma has a fear of cats, the mood is fearful. Next, we treat the scene from book 6 as hopeful mood because of Ranma's success in beating Cologne and returning back to his male form. The part of the story where Ranma became weak due to Haposai's doing, the mood is ominous because of the impression that something bad might happen to Ranma. Scenes from book 25 to 26 were treated to be a gloomy mood because of its setting. The story happened in a monster inhabited woods. Ranma and his mother scene in the story is an idyllic mood. The extreme happiness is very evident in the part of the scene because of their tears of joy. Thus, the plot there is very peaceful. Finally, Akane and Ranma's wedding scene is a romantic mood.
Remember that mood is general atmosphere of a piece of writing and you can determine the mood with the help of basic elements such as setting, imagery, tone, diction, genre, and plot. Now, let's have an activity. For your today's activity, you're going to read the poems and passages that will appear in your screen. Then you're going to choose the correct mood that it conveys. If your answer is C, then you are correct. answer is B, then you are correct. If your answer is B, then you are correct. is C, then you are correct. If your answer is B, then you are correct. For me to know if you really learned in our today's lesson, let's have a seat work. For your today's seat work, you're going to read the following passages and choose the letter of the correct mood that it conveys. I'll give you a moment to do this. If the time is not enough for you, you may pause this video.
time's up. Let's check your work. Here's the answer key for our today's safe work. All set. I hope you've learned a lot from our today's lesson. I hope that now you know how to determine a mood in a piece of writing. Please comment down below the score that you get in our seat work. If you pass, I'll post a shout out of you in our next video. Speaking of shout out, as my means of showing my gratitude and appreciation to all of your comments in my videos, I would like to post a shout out to the following people. Thank you for all of your encouraging and positive comments. Your comments are important to me. By the way, the sole purpose of me making video lessons like this is to help children be able to study at home. So in order for this video to reach as many children at home as possible, please share this video to your friends. And again, to help me be encouraged in making video lessons like this, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to click the notification bell as well so that you will always be updated to new lessons that I will upload here in my channel. Thank you and see you in our next video. Bye-bye!